Hi everyone, today I thought we'd make a card using the new trend size of the 12 by 6 card blanks. I've made mine from a 12 by 12 piece of white card and I've simply folded it in half, scored and then run a bone folder across the edge to get a good sharp fold. So I'm going to put this to one side for the moment and I've already cut a layer that will fit onto my card and I'm going to work on the layer for now just until we get going you'll see for why so I'll put the card to one side as I go through the items that I'm using because we're looking for texture rather than using die cuts and decoupage for this I'll explain how I've made the items and what I'm using so this is my layer that's going to go on my card base I've already scored the edges and I've added pearl drops around the edges however I've left the sides clear there is a reason for this the first thing that we're going to add to the card layer is I've got some gold mesh that I've already cut down from a roll and we're going to literally place that across our card base and for me I'd like a little bit more height to it so what I'm going to do I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to then attach it to my card base so we'll cut the mesh in half like so and for this I'm going to be using a lot of silicone glue rather than just wet glue so what I'm going to do is lay the mesh on the card as if it was one piece still and then I'm going to glue it to the card base using silicone glue I want the edges to go across the edge of my card so what we'll do is just add a little bit of silicone glue I'm not going to worry about where I put it because we've got lots of things to add to the card that will cover the glue so that's the silicone so we'll take the first piece of the mesh making sure it goes over the edge of the card at either side and then the second piece I will place about there and then just press it down so I've got the mesh on the card Next I've taken a piece of paper and I've torn it to show the torn edges. I've inked the edges with a purple ink pad and I've literally made it so a little bit longer than the card itself. So this is going to be glued on top of the mesh that we've just put on. So I'm just going to push the mesh out a little bit because when I put the paper across it I want to be able to see it so now I'm only using silicone glue instead of wet glue on the mesh just so that it takes hold a little bit quicker because it's a strange um, feeling to it and now I'm going to add a little bit of silicone oh, I've put tape on already. I'm going to add silicone over the top of the tape on the back of the paper so that it will take hold of the mesh that I've already put on. So we'll just add a little bit of silicone at either side of the tape because I want a good strong hold. And as I said, the mesh is a strange. Um, I won't say fabric and it's not paper so that's the paper going across the mesh like so in the middle and I'm just going to push it down a little bit okay so next what you would do at home is wait for that to dry but we haven't got time so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to trim the edges where the mesh and the paper are too long 
we're going to literally just cut that away against the side of the layer that we've got and we'll do that on both sides like so now what we're going to do is put our layer onto our card front so we'll take our card front and I've already added tape onto the back of our layer just to make it a little bit easier because while the front is wet it would be quite difficult to get the tape on the back so let's peel the back off our tape bearing in mind that the front is still wet so a few problems with my tape back so we'll peel it off a different way if you have trouble with your the back of your tape if you've got a pokey tool or um, one of the picker upper sharp tools it's quite easy just to be able to get the edge of it and lift it away to reveal the tape so we're going to place our layer on top of the card like so and try and get it a little bit central oh, hopefully we can put it on like so now I'm not going to worry about this because you won't be able to see it when I get everything else on the card so that's our layer with our textured mesh and our car and paper across the top. Now I've already made one or two items that I'm going to put on the card front. And I'm going to speed up a little bit because there's quite a lot to put on. And we're going to add texture and height. I've got two die cut it shapes that I've used the Anna Griffin fretwork die for and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the back of those not a lot because everything else will help them stick down so I'll we'll put two of those on like so side by side like so then I've already die cut some branches in a coordinating card colour and I'm going to add a little bit of silicone and I'm going to randomly place these over the front of the card like so. Now I'm going for random and it might look like a pattern but it isn't. So place one there and then I've got two more to put on so we'll go for one there and the last one will go for there like so so next I've got two gold scrolls that have die cut and I'm just going to add silicone to those and pop one there and the other one I'm going to put at the other side like so next I've die cut three ATC cards one in white card, one in a dark purple and one in a light purple and I want these to sit on my card like so. I've used an Anna Griffin stamp and it says the most special thing about this card is the person holding it. So I'm going to take the first of the three ATCs and I'm just going to pop it on there. The second one is going to go over the top of it there. And then the third one, put a little bit more glue on the third one. I'm 
going to put across the top there. So you see how if you've got anything that you're not happy with, you can move, you can put in a different place. So now I've got an assortment of flowers that I've made. I've made some poppies and I'm going to put those there and there. I've made some daisies which I'm literally just going to pop in different places. They're all in coordinating card so that I know everything will turn in and match. And this is where the flowers cover anything that you might not be happy with. So these are the frilled flowers, again in the coordinating paper. And I think I've literally made two of each flower and then that way I know that they match each other and using the coordinating paper you know anything you're going to put on your card is going to match. Now I've also made some of the frilled chrysanthemums so I'm just going to pop a couple of those on like so and last but not least in the flowers I've got some tiny little buds little blossom flowers that I'm just going to pop on again randomly just to build up texture and the amount of flowers on there most of the flower tutorials sorry are already on YouTube we'll be doing a few more um, in a few weeks so those are the buds now I've also lastly I've got some extra leaves that I've made so I've tinted them with the coordinating ink pad and because I've left them to last if there's any sections that I'm not happy with or anything that I want to cover over I can literally slot the leaves in and it will cover them up and I think that is nearly everything. You can keep going with it, you can always add more, but I think for me that is perfect and that is a textured collage of gorgeous flowers and stamped images. And I'm really happy with that. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again another time. Bye.